trim level. This is the most entry level or base model duration for the Honda Civic. And as the ninth generation was coming out, the designers definitely wanted to start from the ground up and they definitely accomplished a great, great style. The lines on this car definitely lead your eye around the car. The lines connect and I really like this flat hood. I love what they did with the wraparound chrome with the headlights. You do get LED daytime running light. It makes this car really stand out and pop even in daytime situations. Going back to the body lines, there are two pronounced body lines on the side of the car. You will notice there is one up top starting from the grill, kind of fades towards the fender and then continues all the way back. I really like the unity that this one line creates through the whole car. It definitely gives it a complete feel. And then on the bottom, you have a more of an angled cut going down towards the bottom of the car. And that does highlight the wheels. On the LX trim, you do get steel wheels with the wheel covers. Again, since this is the base model or the most standard slash entry level, you're not gonna get the alloy wheels. You will get the alloy wheels on the next trim levels up, which would be the EX and the EXT. Moving along onto the back of the Civic LX, you will still notice the bold lines. Definitely is unmistakable when you are driving behind it. One thing I will note is even if this is the most entry level, it still gives you LED taillights. Biggest benefit to you is the bulbs last a lot longer and they are brighter. Another thing I will mention that is notable on the Honda Civic LX is the body colored side mirrors as well as the body colored door poles. A lot of other manufacturers, when they do make an entry level car, they will make them just matte black. As we transition into the interior, let me just talk about a couple specs. This car does have a two liter engine, puts out 158 horsepower, which replaces the old 1.8 liter that crunched out 143 horsepower. With that power plant, you do get 41 miles per gallon on the highway and 31 in the city. This engine is paired to a CBT transmission, which is very responsive. Also, before we go into the vehicle, one thing I didn't mention yet, but I could have earlier, is that this car is priced at $20,275. Now let's go inside and see what else this car has to offer. Again, even if this is the most entry level Civic, it definitely doesn't feel like it from the inside. Let's start with the features that normally aren't something that you would consider a base model feature. First off, this car does have a backup camera. You do have three different views on that backup camera. As soon as you put it in reverse, you do get a normal view, a wide angle, and a top-down view. Very, very useful settings. It does display on this five-inch display here. The car also has Bluetooth with capabilities of pairing with Pandora or any other things uh, that could be playing on your device. You can listen to your audiobooks, you can listen to your podcasts, you can listen to your Spotify if you wanted. Another thing that comes on this car that isn't normally a base model feature is you do have auto climate control. You can actually set your temperature and the fan speed will change uh, as well as the temperature settings just to keep it at the exact temperature that you set. That is so awesome. Another thing that this car has that I wouldn't consider a base model feature is you do have auto up and down windows. Give it one good push, it comes all the way down. Give it one good pull and it goes all the way up. And that is actually on the driver's side and the passenger side. So to me, that is a very convenient feature. Overall, just the layout of the car itself feels really good to me. If you saw my last video, I did buy one myself. I got the EXL level, just a lot more features. But again, this is a great value for the price that you are paying for it.
looking down here, you still have that same cable management system, so your cords aren't all over the place. Definitely ample room in terms of storage here with a removable cup holder so you can utilize all the space down there. Also, one thing that is notable that I wanted to mention on the dials, your cruise control and your audio and your Bluetooth functions are actually not just painted on the exterior where your little icons are. It's actually beneath this sort of acrylic type material. So over time, in terms of longevity, you're not gonna wear out these buttons to the point where you can't even tell what the buttons mean anymore. So that's one thing that I like in terms of Honda thinking of longevity of the vehicle. The display is still really nice. You do have a digital speedometer as well as your average miles per gallon, real time miles per gallon as well. Uh, in terms of the materials used, uh, it is the same throughout the levels in terms of the metal type finish right here as well as the soft touch materials on the dashboard. Another feature I feel that isn't base is you do have that brake hold assist. Essentially what that does is it's like cruise control for your brake. It's always, you could always set it as on. As soon as you come to a complete stop, it'll hold it for you to where you can take your foot off the brakes. As soon as, let's say the light turns green, you can just put your foot on the gas pedal and go. You do have an electronic parking brake as well as an econ button. That's just a mode of driving, essentially. The engine and transmission as well as the whole system of the car in terms of air conditioning just work together to maximize that fuel economy. The previous generation would report about a mile or two more per gallon. It just depends on how you drive. While I'm sitting in here though, I did want to mention another non-base feature that I feel this Civic has is you do have a capless fuel filler. Super cool, keeps your paint from getting all scratched up if your cap was dangling there, so you no longer have that. Another benefit is you can't accidentally tighten your cap to where it's too loose, where it sets your check engine light. In terms of safety, really briefly, this is expected to get five-star crash test ratings as well as the top safety pick plus, just like the previous generation did. In terms of comfort, this car does not have power seats. The power seats come standard on the EXL trims and above. However, I would say even the settings in terms of the bolstering, the support on your lower back, all of it feels really comfortable. The headrests are not in an awkward position or anything. Definitely a car that I could take a long drive in. You also still have your tilt and telescopic steering wheel on the car as well. So you can find your optimal position because you know posture is really good, especially if you are uh, driving long distances. One comment that I get a lot, especially from my customers that are coming from other manufacturers, is that the steering wheel is small and that's one of the things that i like it's just easier to maneuver you don't have to really do the hand over hand thing i really think it gives it a sporty feel the cloth in here seems really really durable uh, this specific car is in the rally red color and that does give you the option of the black interior and i really think it gives it a really nice look with this uh, different type of stitching just to give you a bit of contrast and it does feel like it'll last a long time. That was my quick review or overview of a car again that does not get much love especially on YouTube you'll watch a lot of these car reviews and they're all on the touring or EXL trims I'm a part of that but I wanted to show you what the LX or entry level gives you for your hard-earned money and that's what I like doing with these reviews is I like to be able to show consumers what you get for your hard-earned dollars. So hopefully this helped you if you are looking at getting an LX model. Actually, most people are looking at this model in terms of a nice commuter that will perform and be dependable and hold its resale value in the long run. Again, hope this helped you. Thank you for checking out this review. If you liked it, definitely like, comment, subscribe. If you do have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Uh, and if you are looking to purchase a vehicle, definitely look me up if you live on the central coast of California. If you live farther than that, I can't really help you too much. But I, again, I do sell cars, so I do appreciate it if you come look me up if you are in my area. Also, thank you Honda of Santa Maria for allowing me employment as well as letting me do reviews like this. So anyway, guys,
Under the hood, we now find two different engines, depending on the trim level that you get. Things start out with this engine, which is a two-liter four-cylinder engine. It's a little bit bigger than last year. It produces 158 horsepower and 138 pound-feet of torque. Although this engine is larger than last year, it actually is more efficient, according to Honda. You can get this engine with either a manual transmission or a CVT or continuously variable automatic. The next engine up is found in the EXT, EXL, and the Touring trim, and that is a brand new 1.5 liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine. It produces 174 horsepower and 162 pound-feet of torque. I found this generation Civic to be a hair less comfortable than the 2015 Civic when you stack it up against the competition. That's not necessarily because the Civic has changed, because in fact this seat is just about as comfortable as the last generation Civic, but the rest of the competition has changed, and it is a little bit more common to find adjustable lumbar support and power seats in the competition. Even though the side profile of the Civic has this very coupe-like styling, we still have a reasonable amount of headroom in the back. The one thing that I did notice sitting in the back, however, is that I do have less headroom than I found in the Toyota Corolla or some of those other more upright compact stands. The overall shape of the Civic has had an effect on the practicality of the cargo area. You will notice that this trunk lid is relatively short for a compact sedan. Some of those others out there do have a longer trunk lid, it means it's a little bit easier to stick larger items in the cargo area. However, Honda does give us a reasonable amount of height, and that turns this into more of a trunk slot like we see in something like a Volvo S60. This means that you can stick child seats on their side and actually insert them into the cargo area. The biggest thing you'll notice when you get inside the Civic is that we no longer have that funky two-tiered instrument cluster that Civics have been known for for some time. Instead, we get this large LCD instrument cluster flanked by two traditional gauges. The display is controlled via the button arrangement on the left side of the steering wheel. This button right here changes between those various settings. Then we have this up, down, and side to side with enter button that does a variety of things. It controls this display and it also controls the infotainment system. So this track forward, backward, and option up and down or source depending on which display you're in on that multifunction display. The left side of the steering wheel looks very similar. We have the lane keeping assistance on and off button right over here that allows the system to read the lane lines. We have the controls for our radar adaptive cruise control and the cruise control off and on button. Inside the cabin, we see a high percentage of soft touch materials for the 10th generation Civic. That's different than the 9th generation Civic when it was first launched. A soft touch injection molded plastic upper and then a fabric insert right here for the main portion of the door with a soft touch armrest. The dashboard also features more soft touch plastics than I had expected with a soft touch upper portion, well integrated airbag cover, soft touch middle portion right here and then hard touch plastics below that and they also make up the sides of the center console. Moving over to the center of the dashboard we have two large air vents and then we have this infotainment screen. This is essentially the same system as we see in the 2016 Honda Accord only without the two screen setup so we get just this one screen. It's also similar to what we saw in the last generation Civic but the software has been greatly improved and it now supports as you can see Apple CarPlay as well as Android Auto. Below the display you'll find the controls for the single zone automatic climate control control system, this button brings up the climate display on that infotainment screen. In general, Honda hasn't delivered the fastest sedan in this particular category, even with the Civic Si. However, that is changing for 2016 as well, because this particular model, which is the 2-liter naturally aspirated engine, ran from 0 to 60 in about 8 seconds, which is average for this segment, or a little bit above average, depending on how you compare it. However, there is now a 1.5-liter turbocharged engine that is significantly faster 0 to 60 than this. That's before even Honda releases their new Civic Si, which we do expect to see very soon. Braking is relatively good in this particular segment, 
we're going from 60 to 0 in 123 feet, and the handling is very good as well. I wouldn't say that the handling feel is better than the Mazda 3, but it is quite good, and it's definitely better than the average entry in this segment. The actual handling ability, however, is spot on with the Mazda 3, and the stability control system is not terribly intrusive. This chassis overall makes me very excited for the upcoming Civic Si, because this is a very good platform to build upon. It shouldn't be any surprise to you then that the ride is a little bit firmer than the rest of the competition. If you're after a softer, more plush ride, you are going to need to look at some of the American options in this segment. We've been averaging 36 miles per gallon in very mixed driving in this vehicle, and that is an incredibly good score for a compact stand like this. Not everybody out there is a fan of the continuously variable transmission or CVT. However, Honda does a very, very good CVT. This feels more like a traditional automatic than your average CVT out there. It's noticeable out on a road like this. So we're climbing up the incline and it does the usual CVT thing of varying the ratio in order to keep the engine at the proper RPM for climbing the hill makes the car feel a little bit peppier. But if I were to floor the engine, it actually shifts more like a traditional automatic transmission. So the engine goes from a high ratio to a low ratio much more rapidly than, for instance, Nissan CVT. It makes the car feel more engaging than the Sentra. Like the Toyota Corolla, this transmission will also imitate a stepped automatic transmission while accelerating. You'll hear it right there. However, that's actually going to get you zero to 60 slower than if you just put it in low and let the transmission vary itself. The 2016 LX trim, which is where the Civic starts, will cost you $18,640. That would be with the manual transmission. You can then opt for the LX with the CVT for $19,440, or you can add the Honda sensing system for $1,000 bringing your total to 20,440. Not only do we get radar adaptive cruise control, we get a variety of other safety features that you just don't find in this category, like lane departure warning, lane departure mitigation, and road departure mitigation. Lane departure and road departure mitigation scan the road ahead, and if it thinks that you're going to either cross a lane line or leave the road entirely, then the car will actually try and steer you back onto the road. And the steering is fairly aggressive. This is much more aggressive than the brake thousand sixteen Civic Honda Civic practical awesome gas mileage and incredibly reliable here are some of this vehicle's great options stability control traction control remote engine start anti-lock braking system steering wheel audio controls keyless entry backup camera Bluetooth moonroof adjustable steering wheel driver airbag power steering aluminum wheels keyless start cruise control four-wheel disc brakes floor mats, climate control, FWD, rear defrost. A vehicle like this doesn't come along every day. Come in and get it before someone else does.
much more than a lot of the other Hondas that they've done. You can see that wide stance again from the back. Really nice. And one cool new feature here with the gas cap. You um, don't actually have to take the top off, it's just pop the uh, nozzle right in there. Take a look at the trunk. And it's got pretty good room here. Let's see about average for this segment. Um, definitely bigger than some of the other Civics I've seen. Don't like how it's not flat through the pass-through. Pretty good opening. We should open a little bit more. And those rear LED tail lights look really nice in the night. Let's take a look at the doors here, how they open. And nice wide opening. So back seat, got leather back here, pretty nice quality. You can see it's got plenty of padding here, and leather up top, centerpiece there, leather as well, pretty good cushioning here, nice cushioning against there as well. And this is hard plastic up top for the back, soft down low. You can see this piece here is soft and hard, and this is soft as well. This piece is hard, no big deal, it's fine. Uh, whole back is soft touch. And this is all the way back as far as the front seat. You got a couple of inches here. It's decent room. I wouldn't want to sit back there for a really, really long trip, but um, you know, a few hours would be more than enough um, comfort-wise. It's it's fine. Nothing fancy with the roof. Again, soft touch on the back here. And you do have the piece in the middle, so it's not completely flat, but that's it's fine for the segment. little storage and up front we've got soft touch and soft touch again soft touch again pretty good seats here you can see the perforation uh, lets it breathe pretty good um, better than some of the other vehicles I've been in with leather this is hard plastic here up top we've got this fake um, aluminum and then soft touch here soft touch on the side. So you can see lots of room in here. Pretty comfortable. A uh, little cutout for your arm if the seat is all the way back. Nice little touch. And a little tech center down here. You got your USB. Got my lightning port in there. And it's got a little cubby hole with a holder for the wire. This is for the lane watch system, liking that a lot. You can see the entire lane to your right side of the car. Do a little video on that in a different time. And the rear camera. Liking that feature. Old car did not have that. Uh, we got the dual exhaust on the turbo. Nothing fancy, you can't really see that unless you're right down there. So. And some pretty nice stock wheels, like the design on that a lot for stock. And some nice sharp lines there again in the front. I really like how that front comes together, very sharp. And let's take a look at the engine bay. Nothing too fancy here, standard Honda. It is the Earth Dreams branded technology. With the turbo, I think that basically just means direct injection. It's only a 1.5, but uh, 
puts out over 170 horsepower more than enough for this car I think it's doing um, 6.8 to 60 car and driver says I've had no issue with the power and it does have the CVT some people are not a fan of that I really like it has the power when you need it it's always in the right ratio so I think it's pretty great setup uh, soft touch again just like the other side we do have power on this side front back no lumbar not an issue for me the seats are very comfortable without that and you can see here uh, steering wheel is pretty thick uh, which is really nice it's very smooth um, okay we got the uh, auto up down for the front and very comfortable easy to use handle to get out there I know it's a weird comment but really like how they set that up digital gauges um, very easy to use doesn't get in your way and um, it's very responsive as far as I can tell and uh, this little infotainment system I'm going to do a separate video with that it does have the car play um, one thing you can see here it kind of sticks out um, interesting design choice I kind of like it uh, just standard sunroof here one touch And this is a cool feature. You got the uh, touch sensitive, so you can just slide up and down, adjust the volume. Um, I think this kind of makes up for the fact that it doesn't have a physical knob. Uh, pretty cool little feature. And does have Siri built in. Okay, so quick summary here. Um, really like the new styling. Very different inside than the old version. Um, really, really like the direction Honda's going here. Very premium feel. Um. German luxury um, feel. I know some say that it's um, Audi level. I wouldn't quite go that far, but it's it's close. Uh, it does definitely remind you of that. Um, as far as driving it around, I'd say that um, one thing that stands out is the interior noise when you're driving around is pretty low in comparison to um, previous versions of the Civic. So really liking that. Uh, performance wise it's got more than enough to get you where you need to go I think car and driver says it's um, 6.8 to 60 uh, you can really feel that turbo pull um, I will say sometimes in stop and do go traffic you kind of get a little bit of a dead spot but you really learn to work around it it's not a big deal at all mileage I've been getting over 30 so far without even trying um, really happy with that so far and um, overall uh, just pretty satisfied with the purchase I'm gonna update this video as I get some more miles on it but just posting this as a quick summary and uh, update for everybody <laughs>
size and refinement. And with a lineage that spans over 40 years, can this 10th gen truly be the best yet? Like was mentioned, our test vehicle this time around is a 2016 White Orchid Pearl Honda Civic Sedan Touring. As spec, this Touring model comes standard with 17-inch alloy wheels, keyless entry and remote engine start, dual-zone climate control, heated front and rear leather trim seats, push-button start, sunroof, 7-inch customizable display with Honda Link, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and 450 watt premium audio system with 10 speakers. There's also a slew of safety and driver assist technology that was only found on luxury vehicles costing four times the Civic's price not long ago. Total MSRP is $27,335. As we look at the front, you can see that Honda wants to make a big statement. I mean, check out that bold face. And our touring model's LED headlights, <laughs> they're just crazy. But the impressive design doesn't stop there. The aggressive fenders, character lines, and fastback profile almost make you forget this is a Civic. The rear sports LED taillights as well. And there's a decklit spoiler too. Heck, Honda even went as far as to put dual exhaust outlets on this car. Crazy thing is, they're tucked under the rear valance where you can't even see them. Inside of the trunk, you will find 14.7 cubic feet of cargo space, with a total of 15.1 cubic feet for the lesser models. I guess less is more in this case. Get it? <laughs> All new for EXT, EXL, and our touring model is a direct injection 1.5 liter single scroll turbocharged four cylinder engine that makes 174 horsepower and 162 pound feet of torque, under 16.5 pounds of boost. This engine is mated strictly to a continuously variable transmission powering the front wheels. EPA estimated fuel economy is rated at 31 miles per gallon city, 42 miles per gallon highway, with a combined rating of 35 miles per gallon. Auto academics saw an average of 35.3 miles per gallon during testing on regular fuel. The back seat is impressively spacious in this car. The outboard seats are heated, and the subtle, yet real, contrast stitching is a nice touch. When you climb into the driver's seat, you're welcome with cool graphics and pulsating lights. The black motif has just the right amount of contrasting colors and textures that, again, it's kind of hard to believe I'm in a Civic. Pretty much all of the latest and greatest features are here. Heated seats, large touchscreen, and Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And let's not forget the safety tech. Everything from collision mitigation braking and lane keeping assist to lane departure warning and adaptive cruise control. So with all of that out the way, it's time to take it out and see how it drives. You do not have to drive this all new Civic very long before you realize how nice it really is. It's smooth, it's quiet, the suspension feels good, and it actually is fun to drive. The Civic now comes with two engines. You can have the older two liter that's been in previous generations, and then you also have this new 1.5 liter turbocharged engine. It makes 174 horsepower and 162 pound feet of torque. And again, it's turbocharged, and I believe it gets, it, it, it has something like 16.5, uh, PSI of, uh, you know, Boost. pressure in that turbocharger. And that is decent. I mean, once the turbos are spooled up, it drives pretty decently. But if you come to a complete stop and it needs to merge out into traffic quickly, that's where you could run into a little bit of trouble because the power is not there. Basically, you've got to anticipate a little bit more before you pull out into that traffic. Now, we must keep in mind that this is the touring model of the Civic. It's not an SI, so they're not trying